All right, today's meal time. I'm back in Wickham, as you can see. This is our new sauce caddy now. Is it not, Becca? It is. And uh, what are we having? Hi, we're having uh, vegan fish and chips. Yeah, who made the vegan fish and chips? They did. How long did it take him to make it? Hours. Yeah, probably two and a half hours, I think. Yeah. But yeah, ve vegan fish and chips, I'll show you here. And with homemade mushy peas. And that is a, a beer. We found her in her backyard, gazing at her frozen charred azaleas. We're bringing back your things, Miss Morty, said Jim. So I'm listening to my audiobook of To Kill a Mockingbird because this is my, what month are we in? July? This is my July reread for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. So um, I was listening to this with Becca actually, but she doesn't like this audiobook of it. It is quite an old audiobook, it's older than I am. So I think this audiobook came out in like 1986 or something. Uh, so, I mean, I'm enjoying it, it's fine, but Becca wasn't enjoying it much, so she said I could listen to it while, uh, you know, while I'm at work. Which actually cuts into my YouTube watching time, because I'd normally be watching BookTube now. But, um, yeah, To Kill a Mockingbird, let's do that. I'm also, of course, I am still reading uh, The Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul, and I am enjoying it quite a lot. Weirdly, there is uh, a character in this who is um, basically... There's this character called Mr. Elwes, which for a start I'm just thinking Carrie Elwes, and uh, one of my top books of the year so far, As You Wish. So that was, he was uh, in The Princess Bride, and this is his memoir of shooting that. But on top of that, he has this weird thing where he's basically stuck saying what Dustin Hoffman is saying, which is kind of, kind of funny. And kind, it's interesting, it's still relevant, because I believe Dustin Hoffman's still going. But, um,. I mean, this was written in uh, 1988, so it's cool that, like, it's not just some random celebrity that nobody will have heard of today. It's still, like, a celebrity that's, you know, still very much in popular culture. It's, it's stood the test of time. But he basically, so he's saying everything that Dustin Hoffman is saying, and it reminds me of uh, when I read Heart Shaped Box. So the guy in that who went on to become the ghost, he had this talent where he could put the radio on and he could speak along with the radio as if he knew exactly what the presenters were going to say. So it's weird that the two have tied in kind of, you know, together when I've read them quite closely together, even though they're very separate books. But equally, that's kind of a little bit about what Dirk Gently is about. It's like he's a holistic detective, so he'd want to uh, investigate that because he'd be like, that's not a coincidence. There is a reason for that. We must find out what that reason is. But yeah, I'm enjoying this so far. It's not made me necessarily laugh out loud, but it has made me smile a few times. I'm about halfway through, I think a little bit less than halfway through. So um, I am going to finish, well, I'm not gonna finish today listening to, to Kill a Mockingbird, but I'm gonna listen to about as much of it as I can manage. When Becca comes home, we have a little unboxing to do. Because I have this parcel. So this was this is viewer mail. This was sent to me by Minx Laura123. So thank you very much, Laura. And uh, oh, I should put the return address there, which is good there. But um, yeah, I'm excited about this. So this arrived just before I went to Tamworth to stay at my mom's, and um, like literally on the day that I was leaving. And I want to open it with Becca because I know that Laura likes watching Becca. I also know. At least one of the things that's in here is a Slytherin thing, and we're both Slytherin. So when Becca comes home, we will probably do a film and unboxing of that. For dinner, after yesterday, I spent two and a half hours cooking yesterday, but it was very good. This is, by the way, this is some of the stuff that I got for the kitchen while I was in Tamworth. We went to like some of the, the bargain places, so I've got a few more new kitchen bits. But uh, yesterday I made this, which is a carrot cake. It smells very strongly of ginger. It was very nice though, you know. Just got walnuts on the top and some lemon zest and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna have myself a little uh, little bit of it in a minute. Really, it should be in the fridge. I don't know why I never got around to putting it in the fridge. We'll probably have some of that, some more of that for dessert today. And also I'm gonna make these like veggie kebab skewers. So that'll be nice. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get back to work and reading Hitchhikers and listening to To Kill a Mockingbird. So here we go, let's see what Scout and Gemma are up to. We're awful sorry. They're being sorry. 
Miss Maudie looked around, and the shadow of her old grin crossed her face. Good old Miss Maudie. All right, we'll see in a bit. What's this? You having a nice sniff? Here we go, the final result. So we have the satay sauce vegetables with mushy peas and satay sauce on the side. Lovely. Miss Morris said she'd never seen Miss Stephanie go to the Jitney jungle in a hat in her life. You enjoying to kill a mockingbird, Biggie? I thought I might just look in at the courthouse. Ten past one in the morning, happens, sitting here listening to kill, to, to kill a mockingbird. And writing me memoirs. I'm writing about when I went to uh, went to Milan, Milan, 2014. So I uh, I went to speak at a conference in Milan, basically, and that's what I'm writing about at the moment. Oh, and that's where I keep my booktube sign when I'm not filming, in case you're wondering. What you got, Biggie? You came to the balcony with me. You gonna kill it? Gosh, yes, said Jim. Happily, we sped ahead of Reverend Sykes to the courtroom floor. Blub 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 blub. Uh, Reverend uh, Sykes came puffing behind us and steered us gently through the black people in the back. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, he's got it. There you go. You win, Biggie. He's, he's come to sit right here by me now, but I'm scared he's going to try and bite me. Oh, he's gone again. What are you doing, you weirdo? Didn't you? What are you doing, Biggie? Whoa! Jesus Christ, mate! Tate was on the stand, weren't you? You heard everything he said. Boo, 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 I, uh, is a nice I think I have about an hour and a half left to go, so I should finish it by the time that Becca gets home like from work. In Interesting there's a Douglas Adams quote on my TV. A lot. There we go. It is Thursday, my sleep is still knackered, so I basically stayed up till 4am listening to Hitchhikers. I'm now awake, it's now 4pm. <laughs> I got up about an hour ago, oops. There's an open mic night tonight, which I'm thinking about going to, but I don't know. I don't know if I can be bothered. There's also the other side of town. And the, the worry that I have is when I'm sleeping like this, if I go to something like the open mic, I'll have like four or five beers, come home, and then just be awake for six hours and like be slightly too drunk to really work or anything. So I don't know, we'll see. Uh, as for my actual work today, actually, I'm doing some stuff for Emmanuel Fombu, who I have talked about in the past. He's uh, written a book called The Future of Healthcare. So I've worked on that book with him as uh, editor, and uh, I'm helping him to promote that at the moment. So today, we're kind of finding lists of bloggers we can contact who might be interested in reading it. Oh, let me know, actually, if you want to read this book. We can probably get you a, an e-copy of it. Because part of the thing is with it as well is it's meant to be relevant to people as well. It's not just for like doctors and pharmacists and all that stuff. I mean, the idea is we're all stakeholders in the future of healthcare. You know, we're all going to need healthcare provided to us at some point. So why not, you know, campaign for a, you know, a data-based futuristic healthcare system now. So this is the future of healthcare, humans and machines partnering for better outcomes. If you want an e-copy of this, I can sort that out. And we can possibly sort you a physical copy as well if you talk about it on your uh, YouTube channel. So, so there is that. But yeah, I'm gonna contact some bloggers on his behalf. We're also gonna sign up for Quora so we can answer some questions that people have about healthcare and specifically about things like artificial intelligence and machine learning and all that and how that relates back to healthcare and uh, Medium as well, we're gonna sign up there and post some articles. I have almost finished reading Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul. I have literally like 12 pages left, but I couldn't wait to film this update, so I'm doing it now. And I've had this parcel, so we're gonna try and prop the camera up somehow. I okay, guess so this is from Alternative Stores. Yeah, and they're like a vegan shop, basically. So I got 
first of all, we got these. These are some vegan trainers. Some new shoes for me to wear. And uh, they've actually sent me the very slightly wrong ones, I believe, because these were supposed to have green laces, but whatever. And they have memory foam insoles. Let me try these on, make sure they actually fit my foot. So the reason these are vegan and a lot of shoes aren't is obviously a lot of shoes include leather in them. And I mean, I've been a vegetarian before I was vegan for about 13 years and it's just something I kind of learned to deal with, you know, because it's very hard to find alternative sources of footwear and clothing and that kind of stuff. And while I got those, because this place also does a lot of like snack foods and stuff as well, and it cost me the same for postage no matter how much I got. This here is uh, tinned jackfruit. So you can eat jackfruit straight out of the thing, or you can add like spices to it and stuff. And um, yeah, it's not, it's not really, whatever. Jackfruit is basically this fruit that, it's apparently, it's got quite like a meaty flavor and texture. So a lot of people do like pulled pork style jackfruit, which I'll be interested in. Cause I've never had pulled pork cause I've, went vegetarian when I was 16 and I grew up in like a working class family which means the only meat actual meat products I've really had are like you know chicken nuggets and fish fingers and stuff so I don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything and I've got these geo sticks rice lentil and quinoa geo sticks this is peppery flavor and this is herby flavor and these were like 90p these were so anyway on that note let's get back to to kill a mockingbird she went on today about how bad it was him treating the Jews like that. Here's a boat we saw in Berlin called Moby Dick. It's not right to persecute anybody, is it? I mean, have mean thoughts about anybody even. Their game. Se formó un grupo de trabajo específico para darle seguimiento al caso de Joaquín Guzmán. He's talking about El Chapo. We're watching drug lords, aren't we? El Chapo. El Chapo. We'll upload stage of putting videos on YouTube, maybe just watching it back with the captions on, so that you can make sure all the words are actually correct. And if they're not, you can just correct the little bits as you go. It may seem like a small nothing, but for the hearing impaired, it might actually make a really big difference. Hello. Oh, I've got this like dry skin under my nose at the moment. I've also had it because if you remember a, a few videos ago or whatever, I was talking about my ear infections and my habit of getting persistent ear infections. So those have kind of cleared up a bit, but um, I've now been having really dry skin both in my ears and under my nose as well. So I've got to have some special cream to put on it. It's a bit of a nightmare to be honest. But uh, I used to get eczema when I was a kid on my elbows and on my knees. So it's probably something to do with that. Anyway, that's not what you're here for. So I want to give you a quick update. So let's see, what do we got here? So I finished reading Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul, very much enjoyed it. It's a strong 4 out of 5 for me, possibly a 4.25. Um, yeah, I think this is probably my favourite of the two Dirk Gently books and it has left me wanting to read more Douglas Adams. So he's also got some, uh, which I think he wrote with John Lloyd who is the guy behind QI and also Unbound, the, the publishers, but uh, he wrote The Meaning of Lif and The Deeper Meaning of Lif. He also wrote a book called Sharda, which I do have, which is like a Doctor Who novel. Anyway, I read that and then after that I moved on to this, which is The Library of Trinity College Dublin by Harry Corey Wright. And this is basically more of a photo book, so I will show you. So it's basically just all the way through beautiful photos of Trinity College Library in Dublin. It's one of the most sort of famous libraries in the world really. And uh, it's also the largest in, in Ireland. But um, it comes with like an introductory essay as well, which is very interesting, which tells you kind of more of the context. So for example, the library, one of the reasons the collection is so big is because it got given like a charter where it was entitled to receive a free copy of every book published in the UK or Ireland, which is why it now has, I think, six million books or something. And uh, it's also got these little quotes in. So this is a quote from William Shakespeare. Knowing I loved my books, he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. So this is Prospero in The Tempest. It's very cool. And obviously this didn't take too long. It does have, a, as, as I say, it has an introductory essay of about 10 pages, which obviously I also read. 
and it was very enjoyable. And I'm now moving on to the uh, Penguin Mini Mons. Oh, I guess I'd give this a four out of five as well. And now I moved back onto some of these Penguin Mini Moderns. So the way that I choose what book I read next, I've talked about in videos before. I might do a full video on it if you guys are interested. But basically I switch between an author that's new to me and an author that I've read in the past. But um, I realized this should be counting my rereads with the audiobooks for the rereadathon. So I'm actually owed a bunch of authors that are new to me in a row, I think six or seven. So I'm going to use that time to whiz through some more of these Penguin Mini Moderns. So this is number 29, Notes on Camp by Susan Sontag. And this, <sighs> this is probably the worst one of these I've read yet. This is just pretentious drivel, to be honest. I'm not too sure what the point of it is. It's trying to define what makes something camp. But I don't know whether the meaning of camp has potentially changed since she wrote it. But there are other creative sensibilities besides the seriousness, both tragic and comic, of high culture and of the high style of evaluating people. And one cheats oneself as a human being if one has respect only for the style of high culture, whatever else one may do or feel on the sly. For instance, there is the kind of seriousness whose trademark is anguish, cruelty, derangement. Here we do accept a disparity between intention and result. I am speaking, obviously, of a style of personal existence as well as of a style in art. Camp taste turns its back on the good-bad axis of ordinary aesthetic judgement. Camp doesn't reverse things. It doesn't argue that the good is bad or the bad is good. What it does is to offer for art and life a different, a supplementary set of standards. I, I don't, I literally, I'm reading it and I'm like, I don't understand what your point is. Camp proposes a comic vision of the world, but not a bitter or polemical comedy. If tragedy is an experience of hyper-involvement, comedy is an experience of under-involvement, of detachment. One is drawn to camp when one realises that sincerity is not enough. Sincerity can be simple philistinism, intellectual narrowness. I don't... I mean, I'm getting nothing from it. I'm getting literally nothing from it. I'm reading it just for the sake of finishing it, but I'm going to rate it now already. I'm going to give it a rare, very rare for me, one out of five, because I don't, I don't think there's any substance to this whatsoever. It's just words for the sake of having words. And this is supposed to be what made her a literary sensation. Maybe it made her a literary sensation. I do not care. To be honest, I think if it made her a literary sensation, the people that decided that she was a literary sensation because of it were just taking the piss. I don't know. There's, to me, there's no value to this whatsoever. There's no... I don't understand why this is in the Penguin Mini Modern range when it's... It's just gibberish. But that's my view. I'm reading Chinua Achebe, Africa's tarnished name. And uh, I've stolen some lamb spiced rum. Is that what it is? Yeah. Nearly 2,000 miles south, Coke continues running his international drugs business, unaware that DEA is now it's quite nice. In. Vegan mac and cheese, dough balls, and some butter to go with it. This is the leftovers. I forgot to shoot the actual thing because we ate it because it was delicious. And now we're going to go and watch Drug Lords. Drug Lords. Amsterdam. Amsterdam, 1990, the playground for one of Europe's most cold-blooded drug lords. I'm going to eat a little bit of cake. This is what, what we got left of the carrot cake I made. Hash browns with vegan cheese and on a bit of pepper, courgette, peppers and tomatoes, all roasted. Courtesy of Becca. And we're watching a documentary about cocaine. It is incredibly hot in here. And the lighting is very odd. Becca's driving us to the farm shop. at any given time.
get some kiwi. Bye farm shop. Possibly the only person in the world who has ever vlogged a trip to home bargains. We're watching Inglorious Bastards on Netflix, and so I made popcorn. Yeah. You excited about the popcorn, Becca? Yeah. Yeah? All right, still watching Inglorious Bastards. Actually, there's only 10 minutes left, so we must be near the end. And uh, we have here, spoilers, uh, we have here hoisin mushroom pancakes, and then you've got the wraps there, that is, some sort of sauce, cucumber and spring onions to make some lovely wraps. You're willing to barbecue the whole high command? I suppose that's worth certain consideration. But I do have one question. So it is Saturday, Saturday the 21st of July. I have read a fair few books today. I've been plowing. I don't know why I said that like that. That was weird. So I read John Berger, The Red Tender of Bologna. Now this was really interesting. It's like almost like travel writing, a little bit psychedelic as well. Uh, let me read you the blurb on it to give you a feel. A dreamlike meditation on memory, food, paintings, a fond uncle and the improbable beauty of Bologna from the visionary thinker and art critic. And yet, yeah, it's basically about him walking around the streets of Bologna and kind of almost reporting back to us on what he finds there. And uh, it was just really beautifully written. You know, it made me feel as though I was there. It gave me that sense of, of place, you know. Okay, we also have here Chinua Achebe, Africa's tarnished name and uh, this one was pretty good. So uh, Achebe was talking about Nigeria uh, in an essay called What is Nigeria to Me? And what I thought was really cool was uh, the idea that he had of, uh, he kind of said it's not the fatherland or the motherland because it's more like a child and it needs our help to grow and to reach full maturity. And I thought that was a really interesting way of looking at it. And obviously it's kind of own voices as well, so there's that, so yeah, pretty cool. Okay, then we have Francois Sagan, the gigolo. And uh, I actually didn't realise that Francois Sagan was a woman until after I, like, I, I basically did my review for my book blog and then I always have a photo of the cover and of the author. So, um, but yeah, my problem here, let me read you the blurb. A middle-aged woman breaks with her young lover. A husband is suspected of infidelity. A dying man reflects on his extramarital affairs and these shimmering bittersweet tales of desire and disillusionment. Now... If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you've probably heard me talk about how I just don't like reading about love and sex and romance and stuff in books. It just doesn't interest me. And the fact that that is the entire point of this book just really, really bored me. There was also a bit where she said, um, she described one of the characters when, when they closed the door. She said, um, so it says, she shut the door hastily as though she had witnessed a rape. And I, I don't know how I feel about that as, as a metaphor, you know. It seems to me as well, you, what, is she saying that if she witnessed a rape, she'd just quickly close the door and kind of move on? Because, I, I mean, I'm probably not the best person in the world, but I would like to think I would try and intercede and stop that from happening. I wouldn't just close the door and just be like, oh, I didn't see anything. I'm, I'm gonna give these ratings actually. So John Berger, the red tender of Bologna, that is a four out of five for me. Uh, Chinua Achebe, Africa's Tarnished Name, probably a 3.5 and uh, Francois Sagan, The Gigolo, 2.5 out of 5. We've got to bear in mind, it's, it's just not my subject matter, you know? And then I read In the Shadow of Death by Rudolf's Blaumanis, translated from the Latvian by Aldous Balodis. And basically Rudolf's Blaumanis is uh, like a classic Latvian author, so it says here this is his 1899 short story masterpiece. 
uh, tells of several fishermen lost at sea after the ice floe on which they were carves off and drifts away rapidly. Now what I particularly find interesting here is that this was written in Latvian before Latvia itself was a country. They've only uh, this year, 2018, they've set, celebrated their 100 years of independence. So um, I thought that was pretty interesting. It was really well written and well translated as well. I mean, this is just 2.99 US, $4.95. Beautiful little copy uh, from uh, paper and ink. And uh, they have a lot of books here as well. They also have an Estonian and a Lithuanian author, classic author, and then things like Oscar Wilde, D. H. Lawrence, Guy de Maupassant, Mark Twain. So yeah, and on that note, as it's now like half 11 at night, I am going to head off for a bit. Tomorrow I think we might go to a car boot sale, so there's that. And uh, obviously earlier today we went to the farm shop and also the range, which is like a bargain warehouse here. And uh, yeah, I mean I've been keeping you updated today, I've done good with the vlogging today, yay. This video is probably super long, I'm sorry. Right, let's go. What are you up to Biggie? You're watching C.T. Russell with me. But I want it now. Can you try and very subtly get some footage of me looking at some books at some point? Yeah. You just style it out like I'm doing at the moment. What you found? Cat book. Cat book. Yeah. We're gonna make a little go a long way. It looks a bit. Have we got any mint sauce? I feel like we don't have any left. All right, big thing of garden peas. Yeah. yeah. And then I can make more mushies. Hey, Becca, how did we do? Okay. Yeah. Oh, car. So Biggie's got himself this new place he likes to, to sit. Hey mate. You coming coming out are ya? That is it, he sat he sits behind the books there. Don't you Biggs? Hey? Oh. What do you want? Some of this. Here you go, mate. I have to squeeze in. We're watching Scarface. And I'm making these like, these are banana with a bit of cinnamon and a bit of sugar. So here we have sweet and sour tofu on a bed of onion and ginger rice. There we go, I'm going to put some Himalayan rock salt on. Hello, it is um, just gone midnight and I have information to share, so I'm going to share the information. First off, I want to share the, the books I got from the car boot sale earlier, so I'm going to show you that quickly. I have a big spot on my nose here by the way. But um, yeah, whatever. That'll probably work, but if it doesn't work, it's gonna fall into my, I made a mint tea with mint leaves. You can't, you can't, oh, you can kind of see. Yeah, now it's pouring out. Is it hot? Probably should have removed the leaves, but whatever. So the books that I got, first off we'll start with this awesome thing. Uh, I got this, this treasury of children's classics and it's a box set with Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, and Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. And actually, there are two of these I've already read. I've already read Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland, but not in like these beautiful editions. And uh, I also happen to own three of them, but I didn't have Black Beauty. And I thought, what the hell? I'll get this and add it to the set and it's just lovely. 
So now I have this lovely box set and I think they wanted two pounds for this and I gave them three pounds because they were selling it for like a little, the daughter or whatever. So I was like, you can have the extra pound because those are beautiful and three pound, that's like five dollars I paid for those six books in that box set. I also got this, uh, What's Cooking Vegetarian? Does it have an, doesn't actually have an author name. Copyright Paragon. I believe it's just from the publishing house Paragon. Uh, then I got Neil Gaiman and illustrations by Chris Riddell, uh, Fortunately The Milk. I've heard of this one because I remember the, the title of it stick, stuck in my head but uh, I don't know what it's about. I think it's a kid's book maybe. We have F. Scott Fitzgerald Babylon Revisited here. We have Roger Hargreaves Little Miss Bad which I basically got because I joked that that should be Becca's nickname. And then I got here Richard III by William Shakespeare. So this, this can be my next Shakespeare play. Very nice, very, this is a long introduction. That is 83 pages, that's 100 pages of introduction, over 100 pages. So I've just discovered this has something on the inside. It says, January 2011, dear Daniel, this is not so you can have a copy for directing. Indeed, you may want to keep this nice. It is to represent how much I believe in you and the wonderful plays you will go on to create, whether on the new theatre stage or even more exciting venues in your very bright future. When you gave me a portrait, you said that the best gift you can give someone is a novel. Whilst this isn't quite a novel, I hope that equal value can be attached to it and all the wonderful things about you it represents. May this be the continuation of these wonderful things. All my love, Nell. That's really sweet. I like it when you get inscriptions and stuff like that. Although I can't help but wonder what happened to these people, you know? What are you doing? Why? <laughs> you just, he's such a strange cat. You do some really weird things. He was lying like that, but with the other way around <laughs> earlier. With his legs like up in the air, leaning against that cupboard. Just lying there upside down, weren't you, Biggie? What were you doing that for? You you can be strange sometimes. So I just want to quickly talk about the last few books that I've read this week. So I've read uh, Glittering City by Cyprian Akvensi. I think that's how you pronounce it. So it says here, untrustworthy, charming, fussy Joe spins tall tales and breaks hearts in this rollicking story set in the sensational city of 1960s Lagos. And uh, yeah, like, Fussy Joe in this, he's a musician. And it kind of, I, I, I wrote in my review for this on Goodreads that it's, um, more of like a full book or a full feeling book than any of the others at least so far it tells the entire life of this guy you know it tells the whole life of fussy joe and that's pretty cool i'm doing a really bad job of keeping biggie in shot here but i don't think he even wants to be in here so why are you so floppy uh anyway yeah i would give this a four out of five enjoyed this one then we moved on to jack kerouac peers of the homeless night and this is actually an excerpt it's two excerpts from a book of his called lonesome traveler uh, the two excerpts are called peers of the homeless night and the vanishing american hobo it's actually interesting he made the point in the vanishing american hobo he was like the jet age has made it harder for people to be hobos because you can't just jump on a box car or whatever and ride on the back of it now you can't can't sneak onto a plane you know so um but yeah, I had read Lonesome Traveller, which is the book that those are two, those two things are taken from. I mean, I really like Jack Kerouac, so again, for, for me, it was like a four out of five. It's not his best stuff, but, uh, you know, it's not his best stuff, but it is a pretty good little introduction to his style if you've never read him before. Then I read Hans Vallada, Why Do You Wear a Cheap Watch? And this is basically um, by a German author, and it's... Like, it's all, all the stories are set in Nazi Germany, but before the Second World War. So, um, you know, in the 1930s, after the Nazis had kind of come to power. And it's some really beautiful stories. The last one I wasn't too, too keen on, 50 Marks and a Merry Christmas. War Monument or Urinal was quite good. That was, um, it was about a guy basically who put an advert in the paper talking about how, uh, you know, thousands of cars were passing through this town and nobody was stopping, so they should build a petrol station there. And then, you know, this is where the arguments then come in of, well, what shall we build there? And the mayor's like, you shouldn't have said anything because now people are forced to have an opinion on it. So um, that was really good. And then the first one in there was, why do you wear a cheap watch? The title thing, which is more of an essay, really. Again, probably a four out of five on that one. And then here we have what I'm currently reading, which is The Duke in His Domain by Truman Capote. And obviously I've read Capote before. I've read Breakfast at Tiffany's and Summer's Crossing. I have In Cold Blood on my TBR as well, but I haven't got to it yet. I really want to though. 
And uh, this is basically about the time that he, he went to interview Marlon Brando. So, if you're at all a fan of Marlon Brando, you're going to find this interesting. Or Truman Capote, I guess. Let me read you the blurb. Uh, the mesmerising profile of an insecure, vulnerable young Marlon Brando brooding in a Kyoto hotel during a break from filming is a fearless is a peerless piece of journalism. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. This is probably more on par to be like a 3.5 because it's just okay. I mean, I'm not a massive Marlon Brando fan, I guess, but the significance of it being Capote writing about Brando is pretty cool. So that's where I'm at now, and then I'm going to finish reading that Capote, and then I'm going to start reading this beast. I'm going to start reading The Passage, which I'll be buddy reading with Mara from Books Like Woe. But as it is now a Sunday, well technically it's 10 minutes into the Monday, seems like a perfect time to finish this. I'm also losing my voice, that's weird. More peppermint tea in my uh, Stark Winter Is Coming mug. Go Team Stark, that's better, I didn't get any leaves. Um, yeah, so on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Say thanks Biggie. Yeah, you're all right. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit that like button. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.